championship can only be won by one, and it's going Dutch in 2021. Max Verstappen, for the first time ever, is champion of the world. Oh my lord, Max! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! And there you have it, Max Verstappen, the 2021 F1 champion. Red Bull finally wins. It's X Reachy here. Welcome to episode 12 of the F1 podcast. I'm here with my co host, Andrew. Hello, everybody. And Erica, welcome back. Oh, hello. Hello. So excited to be back save the last uh, save the best for last uh we missed you erica but the the fans are really happy to have you back and guys what a race um i it, well there's still controversy still going on today um but Rightfully uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> um who wants to start off this one uh actually wait before we start we have an announcement a pod announcement um we are officially now on apple podcast so for those that don't know, uh, we've been kind of discussing as a pod, we've been discussing as a pod where we want to kind of go with this. And I've messaged Apple and I submitted our podcast. So now you can listen to us on the go and it's not just going to be on YouTube, but make sure to hit that subscribe button. We'll make sure it's in the comment section below, but um, enough of talking about that. Yes, we are very excited. Uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, Max Verstappen, Wins in the last final races for Red Bull to to be crowned the F1 champion. Uh, Mercedes does win the constructors, uh, but there's been a lot of controversy, and there's still a lot of controversial controversy leading up. And it's only been four days, I think, because we're filming this on Wednesday. Um, who wants? I'm going to open this up for the team. Who wants to start? <laughs> oh boy, my goodness! I think like so many people. Uh, I'm really excited that Max won uh, in in the current standing. I mean, I think like a lot of people, they really like Lewis and they enjoy his personality and kind of what he brings to the sport, but to have fresh young blood in there and a new champion after such a reign of terror on Sir Lewis Hamilton's part, I should be saying, yes. uh, was really exciting. But like a lot of people, the way I see it, I, I don't think this is how you want it to go down if you're either driver for it to come down to essentially a call from the officiating and governing body, kind of re resetting everything at like that last lap when things were so clearly going a different way for so much of the race. So it was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, we had some great lunges and attacks early on. We had some spectacular driving and support from teammates like Perez. But my goodness, it's just mired in controversy, in controversy as we continue to move past this final race. Uh, I think just for context, for people that don't know, I think it was on lap, uh, Andrew, I'm going to look at you, maybe lap uh, 46 or 47. Um, which, for which? Um, for oh, what? for uh, Latifi's crash. 53. 53, sorry. Um, for those that know, the biggest controversy, but there was other ones in the race, uh, started off with Nicholas Latifi, Nicholas Latifi crashing um, and causing a safety car with less than, I think, six laps to go. Um, the safety car was deployed as properly should be because there was a lot of debris on, on, on the field. However, um, there was a rule that indicated that drivers are not allowed to pass during the safety car. But because of there was some jock, jockling or uh, juggling of cars and some that are very far back, um, last like it was a very quick second. The FIA allowed five or six cars to jump, uh, and that resulted in Max Verstappen, who was on fresher tires, um, because he pitted right before the safety car or pitted before the the pit lane closed for the safety car. It should eventually was able to be right next to. 
Lewis Hamilton. And when you have softs versus 30 or, or 30 year old, not 30, 30 track long tires. Sorry. I'm just word, bad with words. I think it was inedible that that was going to happen. So, um, yeah, I don't. I know Andrew. You're probably just wanting to jump in on on some of this FIA controversy. You smell that? Uh oh, what is it? Do you smell that? No, I don't. It's called money. <laughs> and that's what Michael Massey was smelling all day after fifty lap fifty three. This guy saw the dollar signs in his head. He saw the ratings going up. He saw the Netflix series going to be going bananas. Because under the, because technically, like the rule, like if you listen to Vettel and you listen to Alonso, the you the cars that are lapped get to have a chance to unlap themselves. Like right at the start of the states, you, they have to clear all the debris first before the lap cars can start unlapping themselves, right? And then from there, the safety car goes in, and you begin racing again. It's just so that it's just a free way to get people unlapped. The problem was, is that there wouldn't have been enough laps. Where someone when the crash would happen and how long it took time it took for them to clear the debris for everybody to get unlapped and then bring the safety car in for um, like the final lap, so to speak. So, you know, Michael and his dollar signs saw that let's unlap every car in between the two and then we'll let the two battle it out in one final lap, which, you know, screwed over Lewis, it screwed over Ricardo in the back for getting pit, for going pits, it screwed Stroll over. Nevertheless, this is a money-making decision. It was an incredible way to finish the year. I didn't expect anything less of drama. And this is going to be Michael Massey's final race as Called it. a race director. <laughs> because <laughs> what he did was pretty much Bush League, <laughs> in my opinion. Even though it was best for F1, it was best for the fans, to be honest with you, because you don't want to see Lewis win every year. It's just that if you're a traditionalist or if you want someone that follows the rules, you have to let either all the cars and lap or none of the cars on that. You can't do you can't do half and half. Yeah, I I didn't understand what was happening at all watching this. Like, I mean, as soon as I saw Max Pitt, I was super excited. I was like, ooh, it's gonna be a great battle going into whenever this safety car is lifted. But knowing how few laps there were, I was like, well, where he comes out is not gonna make any sense with this order and then you know, people weren't moving and there were all these cars in there, and then suddenly they were moving. And as someone who like I've watched it for a while, but there was a couple of years hiatus in there. And obviously this isn't something that happens very frequently in the first place. So if you're not completely up to date on all the rules, uh, very confusing and difficult to follow. <laughs> well, what also is also an issue that the FIA are going to look to rectify in next year is the mid game or mid race lobbying between race directors and race teams to the FIA. Because I think a lot of the decision was influenced based on, um, you know, Red Bull calling into the F or calling into Michael saying, "Look, you only need one one car to unlap it, right?" And then you have Toto going on acting all Karen. Michael, <laughs> Michael, no. Yeah, this, this isn't right. <laughs> this is right, Michael, no. <laughs> but just a classic. I just the, my favorite line though was when. <laughs> Toto goes to Michael, Michael, this isn't right. You have to reinstate the race. <laughs> and Michael goes, Toto, this is a motor race. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, uh, it, not a good it, day it, to be a set of headphones if you're around Toto Wolf, that's for sure. No, but I think Danny said it pretty, Danny Ricardo said it pretty best on the uh, radios that he's happy he was not part in that whole process because who knows what ha would happen. Like it, you know, both drivers deserve to win it regardless. It was a matter of who's going to win it, who wasn't going to win it. Um, you know, Hamilton had such a dominant lead right out of the gate. Even though we started in second, Max wheel spun it, like his tires wheel spun. Couldn't get to, you know, couldn't get to the first turn fast enough. And then it was just pretty much controlled by Hamilton throughout the way there. You know, big props to Checo for letting Max catch up by playing some amazing defense. And it's definitely a team game at that point. And like, you know, people could get pissed off at Lewis for quote unquote dangerous driving. That's it's hard racing driving. He can technically say I'm fighting for my position. Exactly. And his tires were dropping off, but it's just like, yeah, it, it, 
he was protecting his teammate, playing the ultimate team game. And at the end of the day, Christian said it best. He needed a miracle to um, needed a miracle to win the race and um, upstep Nicholas Latifi or Goat Tifi, should we all say, for making the incredible move to uh, you know get his tires dirty and uh, crash into the wall in lap fifty three. Johnny, you're I don't know what's going on, but Richie's mouth is moving, but no sounds are happening. Oh, have you guys not been hearing me this whole time? Well, now, now we can do. hear you. Oh, we heard you earlier, and then we suddenly didn't. But now, sorry, Mike. It's clearly, it's been a while. Uh, I was just saying that Nicholas Latifi is going to probably get a lifetime supply of Red Bull, and he, and he he's not going to admit it. Um, but he he's going to be flooded in Red Bull cans when he's at Williams next year. Um, a couple other things that happened in the race. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Gio and uh, Kimi uh, retired. Uh, having some vehicle issues, uh, so that's their and it's sad because we obviously wanted uh, Kimmy to have a good race because since it was his last before retirement. But yeah, and then also obviously Russell retired as well. Latifi uh, obviously crashed, and then Perez um, was it engine problems that he was having? I have no clue. I was trying to figure it out, but there was no announcement made around the time of the race because beyond confusing, because I think he. It was while the pit lane was open during the safety car that they pulled Perez off the track, right? Which it could have been. Uh, like a, it could have been, a or like just car. before. Uh, they said it was oil pressure on his car. Oh, okay. according to the FIA. Interesting. Um, and then a couple other notables that we had this weekend: uh, Yuki Tsunoda coming P four, um, Carlos Smooth Operator. Get, you're getting smooth, on the podium. <laughs> you're a smooth what? A smooth operator. <laughs> um, I didn't think also, I was. Go ahead, sorry, Erica. Sorry. Also Erica, we miss you. Go ahead. <laughs> I also thought it was hilarious how on the radio, like he's calling himself a lion, and everyone's like, "You're a lion, man!" And then, and they're like, "What are you?" He's like, "I'm a fucking lion." And they're like, "No, what are you?" And had to like go to him <laughs> and, <laughs> into calling himself a smooth operator. <laughs> I think my, I, I didn't realize that, uh, for those that don't know, but I posted on the F1 Instagram smooth operator and I got 6,000 likes Let's on that. Johnny. <laughs> There's a celebrity among us folks. No, no, it is a team effort here. Um, but, uh, I got a question for the Ferrari fan here. Sure. Since signs had a better season than Leclerc, who's your number one going forward? Ooh. Oh, I'm telling you right now that like, I love that science was on the podium, but this is just going to rile up the Italian media. Can you, you're bringing in, you brought in a new driver from your rival team. He He outperforms. He outperformed. He actually had some of the most consistent form to end the season. He is, uh, I think he's leading in terms of points without an F1 win right now. Um, But yeah, I think he got, was it five podiums, three or four podiums this year? One, two, three, three, four. Monaco for sure. Four. But uh, yeah, so I think there's some pressure going to be on on Leclerc going going forward. Uh, I mean, I do think that both of them are are very good together. But in everyone knows Ferrari, it's it's not a two man team. It's a one. Usually, uh, there especially the sport, there is one driver. So yeah, I'm, it doesn't I'm really. Saying... Oh, go ahead. Carlos was had a points finish in every race since France. Yeah. Yep. That's like 14 in a row. Unheard of. I don't think anyone else has done that. No, no because he... we had Max and Hamilton both crash out or not place in the top 10 at least once in that time as well. And can we just take in that McLaren is the only team this season to go one and two on the podium? Yeah, of all teams, McLaren. <laughs> but can we also take in the fact that McLaren just a- absolutely dusted by Ferrari and since that engine upgrade happened? And what, what race was that? That was – was that Turkey or Russia or was it the U.S.? Uh, so I think it, it must have been Turkey because they said after the Italian Grand Prix, they wouldn't be – see some of their specs wouldn't come in until then. Okay. But uh, you clearly saw a difference. So yeah, after um, that it was like game changer. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Turkish um, Grand Prix is where it really flipped. 
a good finish by Fernando and Esteban, uh, Esteban eight and nine. I think they definitely had a good season too. Uh, for, uh, Fernando really showed that, um, Valtteri coming P six, uh, his last race for Mercedes. And he was not, he was pretty clear on his feelings, uh, hearing that Lewis didn't, didn't win. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, uh, Andrew, I'm going to ask you, what do you make of some of these FIA, uh, sorry, these Mercedes, um, admissions at the end of the race, like, uh, them submitting to the FIA, uh, some of these protest points. Well, like, I, I, I think if Red Bull, if this happened to Red Bull, they do the same, you know, they're going to defend their driver. Like there was, you know, the, the problem is that the FAA aren't going to go against themselves and admit that they fucked up for better lack of terms, but like, they're, they're, the first appeal with regards to Lewis and like Max overtaking him in the safety car window is a little tricky because like they were side by side. And to me, that's kind of like Max stayed behind when he went to go, whatever. He didn't overtake him. If anything, it's like, like minuscule. And the second appeal with regards to having everybody go, you know, having, you know, not following proper procedures during the safety car, FAA aren't going to screw them over, but you know, they have to defend their driver. So, of course, they're going to appeal. Uh, but you can tell afterwards that, like, you know, Toto was partying nuts. So was Valtteri. I'm sure that it wasn't the end of the world. I just think, like, they do it to protect their drivers. Um, the guy I feel the worst for is actually Lewis Hamilton. And he's actually had the most grace in losing, in my opinion. Because if that happened to me, I would have been livid. Even if I was a seven-time world champion. He even said, like, he said, like, you know, when you feel like the, the race results are getting manipulated... That's not good. <laughs> and the way he held it with class and dignity, I really, really applaud that on his uh, efforts. So, so is it, is it true that Toto was partying with Max Verstappen after? No, that was an edited song. Oh, I was so <laughs> rattled. <laughs> There's an Instagram video going around of like um, Toto at a Mercedes party dancing. And it was like, the edit was to a super max song. I was like, there's gotta be no way if that was the case, because <laughs> otherwise this is just all for show. <laughs> um, I also saw that, uh, Max Verstappen was partying with Martin Garrix, uh, yeah. after his podium. Um, there's a lot of celebrities that have been going to these things. I'm, imagine getting stuck in on an end of the year F1 party. The amount of money that just flies around here would be insane. I would be in heaven. I don't think I'd survive. I feel like those people are just on another level and you've got all the drivers, especially like with how insane the last few races were with the quick turnover and everything. Like I'm sure a lot of people still have not recovered from the fast pace of the races and logistically getting from A to B for the last while. I mean, but little credit to them. They partied their ass off into the wee mo- hours of the morning on Monday, and they came back right away for Tuesday testing. Like postseason testing on Tuesday, like unbelievable. <clears throat> Just absolutely insane. I think the one thing though that I will say, and as much as we haven't had you know this kind of last go safety car incidents before, the biggest thing that I'm looking for going into next year, so that we hopefully avoid something like this, is consistency from the FIA because we've found time and again this season that the same calls weren't being made. So think about the first lap going into turn nine where Max made the lunge at Hamilton. Uh, Even though, you know, last week, both of them went off the track this week, Max was able to stay on. I mean, I know the FIA is saying that because Hamilton stayed in first, even though he was forced off, it was like no advantage gain, but he was very clearly ahead coming out of that turn when he joined back on the track. And last week we saw a completely different decision being made, right? So who's to say that if something like this happens next year with, you know, a crash so close to the end of the race and a virtual safety car coming out that we're not going to have the same kind of shenanigans going on, right? So. And I, and I think to add to your point, Erica, I think if the FIA is serious about making change, I think as Andrew and I very clearly said, like, it's got to start with Michael Massey, like, you cannot bring someone like him at just the controversy that like is still going on about this race. Mind you, we are are filming this on Wednesday and still Twitter and the FIA, sorry, the F1 community is still going crazy. Um, So I'm going to jump into testing because testing was actually quite interesting. Um, I don't know if you guys caught this, but 
Max Verstappen has decided to go with number one for next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. No surprise, uh, but also just some ego-ness uh, for Red Bull. But like, hey, they deserve it. They they, they broke a thing. Uh, they broke the Mercedes streak. Um, the gold boots. Did any of you guys see that? Max Verstappen oh, was like, yeah. <laughs> like briefly. Yeah, so he uh, was wearing gold boots uh, at, at testing. Interesting choice, but okay. I think he'll milk every second, rightfully so, of him being a world champion. Because he made he made a good point. It's like, when are you ever going to be able to wear number one again? Yeah. Uh, in that, position. I mean, if you're if you're Vettel or Hamilton, you're you're right with opportunity. But <laughs> <clears throat> well, Hamilton never changed. He always stayed up with forty four for winning. Mm-hmm. Which I was applauded. I really, I, I didn't, I didn't realize that was a full rule. You have the right to wear number one after winning it, after winning a world championship. Like I know it used to be like when they did the car numberings back before the personal selection. It was whoever was the world champion was one, and then their teammate was two, and then they limp, numbered it off from there. I'm pretty sure, but um, I find that I find that interesting that you're allowed to, you have the right to wear one uh, on your on your car. <laughs> I mean, how else are people gonna know? <laughs> I guess, but that like that screws up his whole branding. <laughs> I know, right? Like, imagine if you buy a T-shirt or something or whatever. There's probably some poor graphic designer somewhere at Red Bull is like, oh man, now I gotta go change everything. <laughs> you know what? If Guan Yu Zhou really wanted to fuck things up, he should have just took thirty three. <laughs> um. Well, it's kind of like a feel like a Toronto Maple Leafs fan because you like you buy a jersey of a player, and just how much of a turnover. Well, not this group, but I mean, at Matt Sundin, I had a Phil Kessel jersey. Pretty sure well, I had a Dion like, Dion Phaneuf jersey. I, I think I've gone through like four or five Leafs jerseys of players that only lasted like three years. Well, even like William Nylander, he used to wear twenty nine, and then he switched to eighty eight. And like kudos to him, he was like, if you bring your jersey in to get the numbers changed, so he'll, he'll pay for it. But it's like one of those things, right? You're like, oh, okay. Um, and then uh, George looking good in the Mercedes. I'm excited to see what he is going to do. Um, Valtteri left him a lovely mask of his own face, which was great. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, Did you not see that? He looked like a little cardboard cut out of his face being like, good luck next year. <laughs> He, like, I, I, what's, I wonder how Valtteri's going to do at Alfa Romeo next year. I, I, we can talk about this another pod, but, like, I, is it kind of going to be, like, a kind of a goodbye semi, like, kind of what Kimmy did the last couple of years? Is that what the focus is going to be? Um, I also l- loved his Beyond the Grid interview. I don't know if you guys uh, listened to it. Mm-hmm. Or he was quite critical. He's like, I wish I pushed more to be the first driver. Like he understood his place for with Mercedes, but it was it was quite interesting listening to it. It's so tough though when you have like a six, seven time, you know, like a seven time world champion as your teammate. Like, and especially you- coming off the heels of the Rosberg and Hamilton relationship, which I think Mercedes was really wanting to avoid having happen again, because that was just nasty down at the end and not really serving anyone. In the, in the grand scheme of things, especially with Red Bull becoming increasingly competitive over the years, right? So, like, I think Valtteri did an amazing job for what his role was always intended to be. For sure. And I mean, no one would say that he was a unsuccessful driver. Like, everyone, I think, would stand to, like, it stands to reason for sure that he is doing phenomenally well. Mm-hmm. Um, I am curious, though, I think it'll be interesting to see him likely take on more of a mentorship and leadership role for this Alfa Romeo team, having such a young buck come up from F2 next year. But um, I mean, who knows? I mean, none of us really know at this stage of the game what it's going to be like with the cars and the new rules. So who knows? Maybe Alfa Romeo is going to be more competitive than it's been in years past, and it won't be as horrific a move as some people were expecting it to be. I'm looking forward to when it comes to preseason testing who is going to be the team that finds the first few loopholes in the new regulation and really take advantage of it. And like really an interesting steering wheel. 
yeah, maybe it's <laughs> a new DAS system or something like that. But you know, really taking advantage of those new regulations to kind of make it a huge, like a insanely competitive car. Because you know, F one's been tightening that we're going to have closer racing, cleaner racing next season. I wonder if that's going to be fully true. When we don't, we won't know until FP one happens in Bahrain, which is in ninety two days. People, no, oh, only ninety two days. Oh yeah, I oh, love yeah. it. That makes me so happy. I don't know what I'm going to do for the next ninety two days, but <laughs> I, so speaking speaking about things to do, write down in the comment section below. What should the pod talk about during the off season? I mean, we're going to probably be watching old races till like the start of Bahrain, but we would love to hear your suggestions. I think we have a couple, what we want to do, um, but we always want to hear from the fans and, you know, now we're going to have new fans on Apple podcasts. Shout out. Uh, always got to plug that in. Um, but like, yeah, we would love to hear what we should talk about. Um, uh, we didn't really, I didn't really, to be honest, I didn't know who won the uh, podium predictions. I, uh, let's just say. Uh, it was for the last few weeks too. So I think I'm officially out of the running for that. <laughs> I, think, I think it may have been Richie, to be honest with you. So I got to do a shoey. Okay. I will do a shoey. <laughs> yeah. Not now, not now, but I will do a shoey next time we're in person. Oh, it's definitely uh, Richie then. <laughs> <laughs> as, as you kind of walk away from the <laughs> So next time we record a podcast, if you guys hear some weird gurgling noises and someone swearing, it's probably Richie doing the shoe. <laughs> Would I have to do it in a boat shoe or like a racing shoe? Oh, I'll find it. Your own, like a boat shoe. Oh my gosh. Whatever you got lying around the house is fine. The more stank on it, the better, I think. So. <laughs> Didn't you miss me? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> One thousand percent. Um. So what are some other things? Actually, you know what I heard? You know, speaking about partying, I heard Michael Schumacher was not afraid to party back in the day. I don't know if you guys saw that in his documentary, but he was notorious for partying. I think they talked about that in, in, in the James Allen book. Literally first one to be there, last one to leave. He was terrible at karaoke, but his favorite song to sing was My Way. So I think that's the only <laughs> words that he knew the lyrics to. <laughs> I love that. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. I know one thing to bring up. Uh, can we talk about Yuki Tsunoda this weekend? Let's Ooh. go, baby. I know. Like, so he, he had such a frustrating qualifying session on Saturday and like, you just could tell he was just really ready to go. And then the double overtake by Alpha Tari on Bottas in like the last lap to get P4. I was like, uh, and you know what the sad part was? Um, I, well, the good news is that TSN had the race on again that we can watch. Also, FYI, I'm not watching TSN for a race next year. It's F1 <laughs> TV because the TSN puts through a goddamn commercial when there's an accident or something that goes well. I'm surprised they didn't go to commercial on that 53. So TSN, if you're still listening to this, we are still pissed off that you're still doing commercials. We are going to boycott. Well, no, I'll probably still have to watch it. Uh, but like, we will still... Um, Figure it out. That's all we ask for next year. Just <laughs> figure, figure it, it out. out. If you're going to do commercials, do it on a uh, – don't even do them. Just like yes. we, we already see the commercials enough. It's yes. literally uh, – we when we go by one chicane, it says zoom, zoom, zoom all over it. Like we know it's zoom. Like we know. Just please, no more commercials. Thank you. Sorry. You, I got the F1 subscription this year, and it was worth every penny. That's what I'm doing next great. year. But sorry, then, sorry to go. Go ahead, Andrew. No, no, I'm no, sorry. I'm just saying, like, I actually had to watch Figure it out, TSN. again because my my during the during the first time I watched it, I was so fixated on Max and Lewis that I really had zero clue what happened behind them. So yep. when I watched it the second time, I watched. I tried to figure out the race, like as for as much as we could. I watched. I watched the left pit board just to see where everyone was coming. I wanted to watch it again so that I could see what like you know how third through 10 worked out and everything like that but i was just so it was such a fixating race on max and lewis i really had zero clue what the hell happened behind them during the entire race until i had to watch it again well and and that's when that like when we saw you to know to do the double do the double overtake with gasly on Bottas. i was like oh that's huge i mean alpha tower this was their highest scoring season ever and this is even taking into account adjusting the point system changes that took effect a few years ago so 
huge for them, which is super exciting considering that they're really a B team. Um, but obviously two very talented drivers. I mean, no one's, I think, going to turn their nose up at the performance of Gasly this year, that's for sure. But um, yeah, like I think like a lot of people, I didn't totally pay attention to what was going on either until, you know, there's a brief cutaway where you see the two Aston Martins kind of racing each other and you're wondering what the heck is happening. And then, you know, Hamilton hasn't pulled his car up yet and signs gets out in the P3 spot. And you're like, oh, hey, nice work, Carlos. Good job, man. <laughs> As all season, he's a smooth operator. He has gone under the gun. All the focus has been on Leclerc. And he does. I actually, to be honest, I didn't even realize Carlos was in third place. when no, they. <laughs> So when they when they showed when they showed uh, Verstappen winning and then they it showed the Verstappen face then Hamilton and then all of a sudden I saw Carlos I was like Carlos <laughs> and the fact that he jumped both Leclerc and Lando to get the P five in the in the drivers is quite impressive. I love the little giggle he had when he as soon as they were like yeah we came ahead of Lando he just starts giggling to himself in the car. <laughs> Uh, I have to say, probably like leaving to go to a new team and outscoring your former teammate it has to be a really nice feeling. I can't imagine it being any other way. Well, especially like when Ferrari was so bad last year yeah. that, you know, it was almost like anticipated that they'd have another bad season. But they like to be Ferrari been like the best team, like one of the best teams this year, really just picking it around. Like we always knew Red Bull and Mercedes were going to be up there, but I didn't project Ferrari to have that good of a season. Well, to go from what was it uh you had i think it was at two podiums last year like a dismal um to i think five podiums this year um mm -hmm. yeah no and especially well with four of them being um uh, from carlos uh yeah actually no sorry ferrari had three last year um it's like it's very happy as a ferrari fan like there was like some progress being done and like i can only imagine what the car is going to be like next year and hopefully that can like we can at least win some races that, that I think that's the goal now for, for us is we've accomplished what we wanted in, in, um, in, I'm uh, sorry, in the constructors. Um, but we liked, we haven't won a race since uh, Singapore and Mont and the Italian Grand Prix in 2019. So I, I think like, obviously, hopefully Carlos can continue to race like that in the new year. And I, I just can only imagine what the Italian media is going to be saying for the next, for the, for the break. So. Thumbs up. <laughs> Looking forward yeah. to it. Um, um, you know that next year, I think the big question on everyone's brain is if they're going to be able to get to a race live. So I know oh. one of the one of the girls I work with loves Carlos, and so she's planning to buy tickets to Monza purely so she can go and party with all the Ferrari fans and do her best to win herself uh, a little bit of attention from Carlos. So. <laughs> Well, I'll probably be buying tickets to the Montreal Grand Prix. I mean, it's not going to be as exciting as uh, being in home turf, but like, I'm excited to go to my first ever F1 race. Uh, fingers crossed. So, tickets go on sale soon. I think it's tomorrow. I thought it was the 17th. Wait, what day is it today? Today's Wednesday. 15th, the 15th. So days days are hard. Today. It's yeah. dark and it's sad. I never know what it is. Yeah. Ten o'clock becomes five. I wake up. It's it's dark. I end my day at work. It's dark. <laughs> but then my light is the light that comes from talking with you wonderful people about Exactly. <laughs> can you can you tell I'm running out of things to say? <laughs> uh so no, that's that's totally fine cuz that I, we can segue into our next portion of the pod, which is the end. Um so <laughs> No, but all seriousness, no, but like, I think if to sum up, like, there is still going to be some controversy going in for the next couple of days after this race. Um, but this has been one hell of a season. Um, this is, I mean, for season two, for me of following formula one, this has obviously been my more favorite season. Um, there's been a lot of different winners. There's been a lot of different people on the podiums, race changes. We got so much to expect in the next season. Um, but I just want to say, on behalf of the pod, thank you guys so for supporting us so far. Um, it's been a it's been a fun journey. Um, this is episode twelve, I think, and we obviously started in the mid part of the season. Is it twelve? Please tell me. Cool. I think I said it's 12. twelve. Thank, yes. Thank you. I have to, I'm going to write that down. It is episode twelve. I should have. I probably said that at the beginning. Anywho, 
Um, but we just really love the support that everyone's been giving us. And obviously, Andrew and Erica, I appreciate you being my co-host. This has been a fun project and it's only going to go up way up, Morty, way up. That's all we got to say. Um, but on that note, uh, Erica, uh, I know you've been away for a couple episodes and I think you want to, we want to know what you've been up to. Um, cause you've been killing it on the stage. Um, and you can talk about second city. Yeah. Live theater is back folks, uh, potentially temporarily given where we're at with the state of things right now. But, um, yeah, like I, I think we mentioned it before, but I am in the training center at Second City and will be live on stage January 29th and 30th at Comedy Bar East uh, on the Danforth. So if y'all are looking for something to do, that's a lot of fun. When tickets go on sale, we'll let you know. And we'd love to see some of y'all out there. So get your tickets, gang. Yeah. Uh, and as someone who's seen Erica live, she freaking killed it. So if Broadway, you're listening, Call the pod. We'll we'll throw you on here too. (laughs) Uh, So on that note, uh, thank you for for listening to episode twelve of the F one podcast. I am your host, X Ricci, and with your lovely co-host Andrew. Ninety ninety two days, people. Ninety two days. And Erica. Ninety two days. Ninety two days. And Andrew, send us off. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time today to listen to the F1 podcast. Don't forget, if you're on YouTube, to like and subscribe. If you're on Apple, please follow the podcast. So what is it? Like, subscribe, follow, like, subscribe, and follow. Took the words right out of my mouth. Thank you guys so much for the support, and we'll see you guys in the next episode of the F1 podcast. Peace. Peace. Bye.